uh, welcome uh, once again to our class. Uh, still, we are discussing about the non-discounting techniques, and then uh, again, we are on that kind of particular, the payback period. But um, in this case, we want to see a payback period whereby you have this initial investment here, the 100,000, and when you are going to prepare the, uh, that kind of particular accumulated cash flows, you cannot be able to see that 100,000 in any of the accumulated cash flows. So how can you be able to deal with a situation like that? For example, you can be able to check here, we have uh, uh, this kind of particular question whereby they are saying consider project whose initial investment is 100,000. The project is expected to generate the following uh, cash flows. The project is expected to generate the following cash flows. We have 60,000, we have 30,000, we have 320,000, and they are four, we have that kind of particular uh, 10,000. So now, we want to be able to have this kind of particular understanding. How can we be able to get this payback period because they are saying that you can create a payback period. So what you do, you are going to have the problem of accumulated uh, cash flows. And we said that always the first cash flow in year one is what you are going to transfer to the column of accumulated cash flow. Whichever the amount that is going to be here is the one that you are going to be able to transfer to that kind of particular accumulated cash flow. So you are going to take now this 60,000 plus the cash flow of the second year, so which is going to be 60,000 plus 30,000, which is going to be 90,000. And then you are going to take this 90,000 plus 20,000, which is going to be 110,000. And then you are going to take this 110,000 plus 10,000, which is going to be 120,000. Now you can see you have the accumulated cash flow. So now, uh, if you can be able to check the initial investment, it's 100,000, but you cannot see the initial investment in these accumulated cash flows. In that case, what do you do? So what you do is that uh, in getting now the calculating the payback period, your payback period, the payback period, you are going to take the year whereby you are going to recover almost the whole amount, whereby you are going to recover almost the whole amount. And the year that uh, you are going to recover almost the whole amount is year two. Because in year two, you are going to recover 90,000, 90,000. And note this, that uh, you should not take the year that is going to surpass the initial investment. If you take year three, you see year three, the accumulated cash flow is 110,000, which is surpassing the initial investment of 100,000. So we are going to take year two, whereby we are going to be able to recover almost the whole amount, and you are going to take that year two, and then you add what you are going to add here is actually the amount remaining to recover the initial investment. So you can be able to see here too you recovered 90,000. So the amount remaining to recover the initial investment then is going to be 10,000. It's going to be 10,000 because we only recovered in year 290,000 and the initial investment was 100,000. So we recovered 90,000. The amount that is remaining is 10,000. So it's going to be that 10,000 over this 10,000 is going to be recovered in the next uh, kind of particular, in the next year. So this 10,000 is going to be recovered now using the cash flows of the third year. Because in the second year, you only recovered 90,000. So now you are going to divide by the cash flows of that following year, which is actually, you can be able to see is 20,000 divided by 20,000. So you divide by that 20,000, if you can be able to cancel this under this, you can answer your payback period. A payback a period is going to be two and a half years. Two and a half years. So that's how you can be able to calculate the payback period, just in case whereby you cannot actually be able to see that initial investment in the accumulated cash flows. And just in case maybe you are going to be given uh, two projects and uh, maybe project A and B, and uh, you want to make a decision whether to invest in which kind of particular project, 
for example, let us assume that uh, the one that you have calculated is for project A. If maybe you are to calculate another project and find maybe the payback period is four years, we are trying to invest because if they are trying to give you more than two projects or two projects, and they want you to calculate the payback period, they will, the question is trying to ask you to be able to advise the management on the project that they should invest in. And they should invest in that project that is going to take the shortest uh, period because we want our money back the shortest time, uh, the, so the shortest time possible. So the one that is going to be able to uh, take the shortest period is the one that the management should consider to invest because that means that we will recover our amount as uh, soonest. So that is uh, at the end of uh, the payback period. In our next class, we'll be able to discuss uh, the accounting rate of return and how to calculate that accounting rate of return because under the non-discounting techniques, we have the payback period and also we have the accounting rate of return. So see you there. Thank you.